Hello, and welcome to the Tongtai VTX-7 CNC Basic Operation Training. My name is Steven Huber, and I am the Director of Research and Development at Valley Christian School. The VTX-7 is industrial grade A-class three axis CNC machine. Here are some basic specifications. To start up the machine, simply turn on the breaker switch at the back of the machine, press the on button on the controller, and wait for the controller to fully boot up. Finally, pull out the e-stop to remove. When the machine first starts up, it does not know the orientation of the spindle. The spindle needs to be in a specific orientation in order to change tools. The following steps will show you how to clear this error. Bring down spindle to load currently selected tool. Turn mode selector knob to MDI. Press the edit button just underneath the screen. You should see a short three line program starting with T. This is the command to execute a tool change to whatever tool number is selected underneath the T. Press the input button to load the program. Close the door and press the green cycle start button to run the tool change program. You will see the spindle spin to align itself and then retract and change to whichever tool you selected. Lower the axis down a few inches past the second reference position. Press the reset button to clear the yellow spindle orientation error. While there are a lot of buttons, the control panel is simple and easy to use. The axis selector knob allows you to select the X, Y, or Z axis to manipulate. The handle allows you to move the axis in the positive or negative direction at increments determined by the X1, X10, or X100 settings on the mode selector knob. X1 moves in .0001 inch increments. X10 moves in 0.01 inch increments, and X10 moves in 0.1 inch increments. The mode selector knob allows you to change between handle to MDI to run an MDI program, or MEM to run a G-code program. The rapid override knob sets the speed of the rapid movements. We typically leave this knob in the 25% setting since the rapids are over 2,000 inches per minute, which is much faster than you could be if you needed to hit the e-stop. The feed rate override knob allows you to adjust the feed rate while running a program. Be careful about using this knob as it does not reset itself. You must remember to turn it back to 100% or it could have negative effects on other programs. The upper array of buttons on the control panel will only be used occasionally and include an option to manually turn on the bed coolant for flushing chips. This turns on automatically when a program is running. Access jog keys can be used when jog mode is selected. Auto return button which homes the machine when zero mode is selected a magazine turn button for manually rotating the tool changer. This can only be used when the spindle is all the way up. A coolant toggle switch for manually turning on the spray coolant or set it to auto to have the program automatically turn the coolant on and off. The red feed hold button pauses the machine axes while keeping the spindle running. The green cycle start button starts your program. The e-stop button will immediately disable the machine completely. The top part of the controller is mostly self-explanatory and will just take practice to get used to the menus. You can move the cursor by using the arrow keys or by using the touchscreen. The green input button is used to load a MDI program into memory. The reset button can be used to kill a program mid-run and can also be used to clear out an error or alarm after it has been fixed. Unless there is a serious emergency, it is preferable to use the reset button to stop a program instead of the e-stop button. 
The buttons underneath the screen are quick keys used to navigate the various menus in the controller. Alternatively, you can access the same menus using the touchscreen. The monitor button shows you the currently loaded program and gives you information about the program while it's running, including the G-code, spindle speed, spindle load, and the current tool as well as the next tool to be used. In the setup menu on the coordinate screen, you can set your work offsets after finding the edge with the Heimer and by tapping on the appropriate axis and pressing easy setting on the G54 column. G55, G56, etc. can be used if you have multiple parts in different vices and you have correctly set up your cam. In the setup menu on the offset screen, you can set the tool height offset for each tool. You will use this menu when changing drill bits or broken tools. The heights are all referenced from the zero height of the Heimer. Be careful, setting the wrong height or mixing up tools can cause a crash. Later in this video, we will show you how to change tools, measure the tool height, and enter it in the controller. In the edit menu, you can open a program or it will display the tool change program if you are already in MDI mode. Press edit then open to select a program that has already been downloaded into the machine. Double tap the program to open. Press program check to load the program to get it ready to run on the machine. If you get a green search error, press the reset button and press program check again. If you get a screen with a gray box, the program has been successfully loaded. The program number listed in the monitor window should now be the same as the program you loaded. In this example, the program number is 1111. Now we'll take a look at how to set your work offsets. When setting work offsets, you typically want to find the back left corner of the stock material. The reason we choose this corner is if you are holding your workpiece in a vise, then the back jaw of the vise is static and can be used as a stable datum should you be making multiple copies or if you had to redetermine your work offsets. First, we need to change our tool to tool 19, which is our Heimer indicator using the MDI tool change program. Use the fastest handle 100x setting to locate the Heimer tip near to the stock. Once you are within an inch or so, switch to handle 10x to sneak up on the edge. Switch to 1x to make very fine-tuned adjustments. You have found the edge when both needles of the Heimer are vertical and reading zero. Be careful, Heimer tips are fragile and expensive. When backing away from an edge, use handle 10x setting in case you turn the wrong way. I like to leave the door open during this process to make sure I can easily see the Heimer face. Once you have determined the edge, press the setup button, then coordinates. Select the correct axis under the G54 column and press easy setting on the touchscreen. Repeat these steps for each of the remaining axes. This is what the Heimer looks like when you found the top of the part. Notice that both of the needles are in the zero, zero position and pointed vertically. Now let's take a look how to transfer a file from a memory stick to the controller and load it into program memory. First, take your memory stick and put it into the USB port on the controller. Press the maintenance button on the controller and then IO button on the touchscreen. Press the file name under device A and then press from list to update from the USB stick. Select your program by double tapping on it and then navigate up a window 
and press transfer from A to B. The controller will ask you if you're sure you want to transfer the program, press Y. Then in this case, it, we already have the file. And so it asks us if we wanted to overwrite, which we do. So I press Y again. Now press the edit button and then open. So find your program and double tap to load. Press program check to make sure that it loads into the program. Again, if you see a gray box, that means it, it was successful. Press the monitor button to confirm that the program is now ready to run. When running a program for the first time, it is important to first run an air pass to make sure the program does, does what we expect it to do. With the air pass, everything is set correctly to make the part except that we set the Z axis offset above the part so that the tool will cut air instead of material. We do this by changing the Z offset to exactly one inch above our material. Since Z0 is when the spindle is fully retracted, everything below that is negative. So therefore, to move the Z axis up one inch, we need to add plus one, which would make this setting negative 5.4217. Enter this number using the keypad and then press input to commit. Before pressing input, make sure to double check the number to make sure that you've entered it correctly. Entering an incorrect number here could cause a crash. G55, G56, etc. can be used if making multiple copies of a part being held in different vices so long as you have set up your cam to accommodate. Turn the mode selector switch to MEM and press cycle start to run the air pass. Have your hand ready on the feed hold button in case of an error. Once the machine changes to the correct tool, you can press the feed hold or reset buttons when the tool is part way down in order to adjust your coolant nozzles. You will want to adjust your coolant nozzles so that the coolant sprays directly on the tool while keeping the nozzles out of the way of any stock or work holding. Turn the coolant toggle switch to manual to check the spray direction. Before doing so, close the door or make sure you are not in the line of fire. During an air pass, you want to check that the correct tool is being used and that the machine moves as expected. If, for example, the machine is moving outside the bounds of the stock, then you probably have set your work coordinates incorrectly. On the monitor screen, you can check the program position to ensure that the Z position is correct and the tool will not cut too deep. Now is the last chance to find and correct errors without any severe consequences. Fix any errors in CAM and rerun the air pass. Once you are satisfied with the air pass, you can readjust your Z work offset to the correct value. Since we changed our Z value by just one inch, this change is quick and easy to make. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. There will be times you need to change out a tool in the tool changer for a new or different tool. You may have broken a tool or need to change out a drill bit to a specific size. Remove the tool holder from the machine and bring it over to the tool holder jig. Loosen the collet or hex set screw and remove the broken tool. Replace with a new tool and retighten. When installing a new tool, you will want to snug the tool up into the collet as much as possible without clamping down on any of the flutes. Bring the tool holder to the granite surface plate and place in the provided holder. Turn on the tool height gauge and lower it until it is touching the tool. Record this positive or negative number exactly as shown. Be extremely careful here. Recording the wrong number could cause a catastrophic crash. Remember to never ever zero out the tool height gauge. The zero point of the gauge is referenced to the zero mark on the Heimer. 
If the tool height gauge is ever accidentally zeroed, then it will need to be re-referenced to the zero mark on the Hymer, and every tool must be removed from the machine one by one to be re-measured. This process must also be followed if the Hymer tip is ever broken. Don't try to just remember the tool height. Write it down or take a picture to make sure you have the correct number. Note the small five is the fourth digit after the decimal place and is part of the measurement. Now that you have measured the new tool, you can reinstall it into the machine by lining up the tool pocket with the opening on the right side of the tool changer. You may need to run the MDI tool change command to allow for a full retraction of the spindle. The magazine turn button will only work if the spindle is fully retracted. Retract the spindle until the spindle reference mark is aligned with the uppermost location. Note that retracting beyond this point will trigger a limit switch error and you will not be able to rotate the tool changer. The pocket for tool 14 is now aligned with the opening in the tool changer shroud. You must put the correct tool in the pocket to which the tool has been assigned in CAM. The tool list is assigned by a single person to avoid mistakes and should not be changed by any user. You can now reinstall the tool holder into the tool changer by grasping the tool holder firmly and snapping it into place. Make sure one of the flats on the tool holder is facing toward the front of the machine. The tool holder has been seated correctly if there is not any gap between the tool holder and tool changer pocket. Correct seating is important or else the tool holder will fall out of the tool changer when the machine is changes to that tool. Here I show you the difference between a correctly installed tool and an incorrectly installed tool. Now you must input the correct tool height into the controller by pressing setup and navigating to the offsets menu. Find the correct tool number, in this case tool 14, and input the correct number into the machine using the number keys. Again, you must be very careful as inputting the wrong number can cause a catastrophic crash. Before shutting down the machine, you must always fully retract the spindle. You may need to run the MDI tool change command first before the machine allows the spindle to fully retract. After fully retracting the spindle, press the e-stop button and then the off button on the controller. Finally, go to the back of the machine and turn off the power switch.